Now, I'm working on a project where unit tests are mandatory. Could you go into more depth about why you do not believe in them? I should make a fact for this. Um, because, first of all, it's too much testing. Like, how much test code do you want to have to frickin' write? You know? Um, and I guess there's the question, like, you can do unit tests and write, okay. No matter what tests you write, you need to write the tests after you write the code. This whole thing about TDD, about writing the tests before you write the code, is nonsense because you don't exactly know what you're building yet if you're doing anything interesting. So you can't write the tests yet. Right? You might, if you don't know where to start, you could maybe write one or two little tests as like, oh, this tells me what API I need to call and stuff. But that API is going to change and all sorts of things are going to happen. So you, you need to let that change occur. Otherwise, you're encouraging your code to rot very early. Right? So, so write the tests first is complete nonsense propagated by programmers who don't have enough experience and or who aren't that good at what they do and or are slow and unproductive, right? Um, now, if you get into all this business of writing unit tests for every unit, I mean, it depends on what you mean by unit tests. If you're gonna try to diagnose every unit of your program and write a test for every unit, on the one hand, that's very thorough, which is good. Um, on the other hand, you're multiplying your amount of code tremendously, which increases the cost of your project. Right? So if you can test the thing not as a unit, for example, as an entire game, that might be a much more efficient way of testing in terms of uh, the number of hours you put into programming. Right? And maybe if a cryptic bug comes up in the middle of that, you could start writing individual unit tests to help you narrow down on the problem. But one of the things you find in complex systems like games is that bugs are not isolated to units usually. They, they happen in the more complicated parts of the code, which is where things come together and it's not really unitizable, right? So people who are really advocates of unit tests, I think in many cases are not, uh, are not that productive, first of all, but also are not doing systems that are particularly complicated in my opinion. Um, Now you could, so if you're NASA or somebody, you probably test the hell out of things, right? Um, and, and, but then software development is very expensive, right? So you look at some of these shops that say, oh, we do TDD and all that. And they're probably using horrible languages like JavaScript, which is why they need excessive testing in the first place. Um, but then, you know, you look at the average output of those places, like how much functionality per engineer year do they implement? And it's very low. So then you have to ask, well, why are they so zealous about their development practices if their, production, if their uh, output is very weak? And the answer is because most people are not self-critical and reality-based. <laughs> so, uh, you know, whatever. I'm sure people are going to be angry at me when this shows up on YouTube, but... Um, that's what I think about all that. The other thing about tests is a lot of people advocate, well, you should compile all your tests and make sure they pass, like every time you compile your program. And that just slows down the compile edit debug cycle, right? Which makes you less productive as well. So all these things. That said, right, don't, please don't take me out of context. Testing is very important, right? If you don't test your software, then your software doesn't work. Um, what I'm saying is I don't think that this obsessive unit testing that happens in many cases is the right way to test. I think there are more efficient, better ways to test that capture more bugs and you want to do those things. Someone says they think unit tests are great until fighting them to refactor stuff. This fighting can happen at most phases of development. Right, well that's one of the problems is like the more code you have, the less agile you are and unit tests add a great deal of code. And so changing things, it's like tar, right? It's keeping you stuck and keeping you from changing things. Yeah, that's a good, pseudonym 73 brings up a good point, which is that good programmers throw a lot of code away 
completely true. <laughs> uh, TDD developers would also have to throw the corresponding unit tests away, also true, right? And then write new tests for the new thing. It's like they, t they eat a large constant factor on the volume of code that you have to write. Where in, in many cases, I've heard of shops that write 10 times as much test code as actual code. And these shops aren't like NASA. Like their, their, end, their end output of code isn't even that robust compared to what you would like, but they write 10 times as much in the way of tests. That's like a massive drain on productivity. It's horrible, right? It's like pair programming. Like whoever decided back in the extreme programming days or whatever, like, oh, pair programming is a good idea. Everybody should pair program. And it's like, okay, wait. You just right away, because two people are sitting there writing code and one, the, the keyboard is shared between them, you've divided their productivity at least by two and possibly more, right? Because they're talking a lot and arguing and whatnot, right? So somehow the claim has to be that pair programming gives you efficiency gains of greater than two and probably much greater than two, right? And nobody ever tested that numerically. They were just like, oh, pair programming is a great idea. So um, yeah, this is the kind of people who tell you how to program, right? Like just nobody, nobody cares. They get these ideas and they, they're not empirically based ideas, right? So yeah, the whole, all these books telling you how to program do the same kind of thing where they say do thing X because it has benefits Y and Z, but they don't tell you about drawbacks A, B, and C, right? It's a cost benefit analysis. Everything has benefits, everything has costs. You have to pay attention to the costs and take them seriously. The reason why programming has not advanced very much over the past many decades, despite the fact that all these new paradigms keep getting proposed, is that people don't pay attention to the costs because the costs are subtle, right? The benefits are obvious because the thing got proposed because of its benefits, and you'll hear about the benefits. The costs tend to be subtle and or swept under the rug by the people who want to sell you on the benefits. Uh, and so people don't see the costs, and then they invest heavily in these paradigms of doing things, and then 10 years later, they're like, oh, we're only 3% better at developing software, and we were supposed to be 50% better. What happens? Well, what happened was you didn't take costs seriously. So, yeah, that needs to be in the facts somewhere.